Nathaniel Hackett was indeed fired the day after Christmas. Before you say, oh man, billionaires are heartless, well, they could have fired Hackett on Christmas. They could have forced him to fly back to Denver in coach on Spirit Airlines. But they waited a day. But apparently, there is such a thing as too much green slime in the end zone. Too much slime even for those said billionaires. Yes, the 2022 Denver Broncos are the picturesque example of a be careful what you wish for story. We got the coach we wanted here in Broncos country. We got the quarterback we wanted. We have the richest owners in the NFL and we were rewarded with fire and brimstone. I know what I smell and there wasn't no brimstone. Our stadium literally nearly burnt down this off season, an omen for what was to come. And this Broncos team was engulfed in flames as we burnt to a crisp and we watched as almost all of the other head coaches hired this off season found massive success. Kevin O'Connell and Kirk Cousins dominating the NFC North. Colorado's own has Tua playing his best ball for a while. Doug Peterson revived Trevor Lawrence and has the Jags poised to make the postseason. Even Josh McDaniels, who is bad, still has the Raiders in the hunt. No matter where we look, we cannot find an example of a team in worse shape than us. Broncos country, we turned on the engine for the ride, but we fell asleep with the garage door closed and died from carbon monoxide poisoning in our car before we could ever let's ride. Today, I will discuss the Nathaniel Hackett firing. That's good something. Question, uh, was the moment Hackett officially done when uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee Dalton Reisner was shoving backup quarterback Brett Rippon, or was it when Patrick Starfish roasted our QB on live TV? Russell Wilson having kind of a plankton day, right? Let me know below. Now the Denver Broncos have fired head coach Nathaniel Hackett with two games remaining in the 2022 NFL season, which means the Broncos are following in the footsteps of the Jacksonville Jaguars and firing their first year head coach before he even finishes his first full season on the job. Although if the Jags figured it out, maybe. Oh, so there's still hope. I don't want hope. Hope is killing me. I will never have hope until we're in the postseason. Somehow, John Gruden resigning in shame after sending emails with sexist, homophobic, and racist undertones is less disastrous than the Broncos hiring of Nathaniel Hackett, a nice guy. When the Broncos lost 51-14 on Christmas Day with the national audience watching, watching them fall in their biggest margin of defeat since the Raiders beat Josh McDaniels 59-14 back in 2010, McDaniels when he was with the Broncos, it had to be a massive embarrassment for the Walter Pinner group who owns the team. And trust me, if you've seen the people of Walmart, the website, it takes a lot to embarrass the Walton Penner group. We are, we are Walmart. Now, a lot of these losses have been embarrassing from a standpoint of being outcoached or being completely foiled on offense, but this was the first time they've been utterly dominated all year, and it was to a team that was also 4-10. and 10. Now, Sean McVay, in three weeks, had Baker Mayfield looking far better than Hackett had Russ after 14 weeks. Yeah, that's not what he wanted to cook. Denver now has a really good shot at 13 losses this season, which would be the most in franchise history. And it's remarkable, I'm saying that in a year where we were a pretty popular pick to go to the Super Bowl, that happened. In a year, I thought we could beat the Chiefs. In a year, I thought Russell Wilson could get his first ever MVP vote. Like the hiring of Nathaniel Hackett, I've never been more wrong about a football team in my life. At one point this season, I was like, you know what? I think I miss Vance Joseph. I think I miss Vance. More tragically, Hackett didn't even force the firing by letting someone grind on the front of his shorts at his own restaurant that was not his wife. Nor did he kick his kicker or sign Tim Tebow to play tight end. 
and then cut him. He was simply a bad head coach who seemed in over his head from the very first game of the season. Hackett joins this very short list of head coaches to be fired before they even finished their first NFL season. Urban Meyer, Nathaniel Hackett, and that's it, two. The list is two. Because Bobby Petrino, of course, didn't last a full season with the Falcons, but he just quit. He was not fired. The list of other one and done NFL head coaches is long and oddly features Pete Carroll with the Jets in 1994. As a Super Bowl winning coach who was fired after one season, he is an outlier on this list, but I mention it to provide maybe just a tiny bit of hope for Hackett as he moves forward with his career because I do wish him the best. The on-field results were just undeniably bad, but everyone in the Broncos organization, from the players to the front office, all seemed to like Nathaniel Hackett. So why fire him now? Well, when ownership loses to a family member, they do not handle that well. Remember, the Rams team owner is Stan Kroenke, who married into the Walton family, so to be thoroughly embarrassed by a marrying cousin-in-law on Christmas, well, that's actually normal for everybody's Christmas, but when it's between billionaires, heads will roll. Let's just touch on a few of the things that got us from point A to point B in the Nathaniel Hackett regime so quickly. We were all extremely hopeful about Hackett, and then I've never seen things turn so quickly like they did on that final drive in Seattle when he let the clock run down and decided the best course of action would be to let Brandon McManus attempt a 64-yard field goal. And to make things worse, that wouldn't be the first time the team would try and rely on McManus to set a record long field goal to win a game. But a week later, the team was so disorganized, penalties, delay of games, not having a punt returner on the field, that it led to Hackett hiring Jerry Rosberg to handle a lot of the in-game responsibilities. Basically, our head coach had to hire a coach to babysit him from high above. And we tried to cover it up by saying at least this is a coach willing to admit his mistakes, while all the other first-year head coaches didn't have those same issues. We sat through some of the most embarrassing primetime performances of the season, but the worst might have been the Thursday night game against Indianapolis when the Broncos ripped defeat from the jaws of victory. Oh, did they? Giving Matt Ryan one of his two nice moments in 2022. Okay, maybe he had three nice moments. In hindsight, that might have been the true rock bottom for this season, and I'm glad I was there to document that important piece of history. We thought things might get better when Hackett handed play calling duties over to Clint Kubiak, and technically they did for like a quarter, but Denver only managed to win one game with Kubiak calling the offense, and it was a game started by Brett Drippin. It looked like we were headed in the right direction following the near comeback against the Kansas City Chiefs and then the victory over Arizona. But Santa brought us a dose of reality on Christmas Day. We thought we were getting offensive momentum as a Christmas gift. Instead, we got coal covered in shit, covered in vomit, covered in fire, covered in disease, covered in just some metaphors of pain. And then we ate that coal because of course, we didn't have a meal to eat for Christmas because Russ fucking burnt it. But let's hop, let, we got it, we do, we, we had no other option to fire Hackett, right? Can't get, we can't get rid of Russ. So that's the other reason Hackett went. And like I mentioned in the short, I do not think the firing of Hackett alone is gonna save this team. Oh, they got a lot of problems. Anyway, I think this is kind of uh, unprecedented in, uh, in terms of an in-season firing. And I think it opens the door for George Payton to suffer the same fate at the end of the season. Oh, you guys are f***ing me every time. I wouldn't agree with that because I think George Payton has done a decent job in the draft, but the looming contract of Russell Wilson, and to a lesser degree, the apparent swing and miss on Randy Gregory, uh, it's a big reason this team is 4-11. and Now, you can say all you want about the Sertan pick or hitting on Dulcich, Mathis, Stearns, Javante Williams, or whoever, but it does not mean a whole lot when you've got an 11-21 and record as a GM to show for it. And we all know that George Payton wasn't a Walton Penner hire. Payton's tenure may have begun with peace, 
but soon his job may be resting in peace. So I guess it might end with it too. Sadly, Nathaniel Hackett's best moment as a Broncos head coach was when he sort of almost said a swear word after Denver successfully traded for Russell Wilson. Come on, y'all. Russell Wilson. Holy sh... Um... What's possibly next for the Broncos at the head coaching position? Well, it's not Sean Payton, so stop fucking asking, as he's attached Vic Fangio to his hip to be his next defensive coordinator. And if you think Fangio's coming back with Sean Payton... Meatball. All the Broncos need to find, though, is some sort of sucker, some sort of idiot who's willing to take the job with the most overpriced slash underperforming QB in the league, who was so bad he couldn't even beat the Colts or the Raiders or the Ravens without Lamar Jackson or the Panthers or the Rams. If I'm an experienced head coach, this is not a desirable situation to inherit. A lot of people have speculated about Michigan's Jim Harbaugh as well, but I think it's a massive uh, stretch to say that Harbaugh wants to leave a team that he's taken to the college football playoffs two years in a row for a team that's just not in a good position to succeed in terms of draft picks and cap flexibility. The coach has to be willing to come in and probably play through another bad year in 2023. Now, Dan Quinn was the runner up to get the job last season. And uh, the thought is that he and offensive coordinator Brian Schottenheimer could come over as head coach and OC. That depends heavily though, I think on George Payton staying and whether or not Schottenheimer would want to work with Russell Wilson again. Uh, Russ's last great season was with shoddy but if you believe the chatter from seattle even that wasn't good enough for russell wilson and russ was the one who forced schottenheimer out of seattle that said the wild card in this whole scenario is the fact that the broncos have the ability to offer their next head coach the biggest contract in nfl history because they're rich which sort of hopefully offsets the part where they find themselves in cap hell with very few draft picks to dig ourselves out. And the interim head coaching gig has gone to Jerry Rosberg, AKA Hackett's babysitter, after defensive coordinator Ijiro Evero politely said, fuck no, when asked if he first wanted the job. Now the fact that he and Nathaniel Hackett are best friends does make that situation complicated. And now we know Evero isn't just a great defensive coordinator, he's a really good friend. That's the silver lining here. Super good friend, Ejiro Evero. I mean, if you're someone who would gladly take your best friend's job after they got fired, you're probably a horrible friend. And I do hope Evero will still be considered for the head coaching job in the broad sweeping search that I'm sure is about to ensue. And now we do something we know all too well here in Broncos country. We search for a new head coach and pretend that they're gonna come in and fix our team who is currently led by a bad quarterback. Broncos country, let's repeat the process. I remember when let's repeat uh, referred to Super Bowls here in Broncos country. Boy, look, look where we're at now. Thanks for watching. That's good sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I recapped last night's game. If you want to relive that miserable, horrible experience, uh, best and worst will be up tomorrow late. Too much news to get it all done today.